Hello, it's Alex, the Bookubus. Today I'm going to be sharing a book haul with you. I think my last book haul video was back in October, so it has been a few months and I have acquired a few books since then. So I thought it was about time to make a video about them and share them with you. I have 25 or so books here. About half of these were gifts, uh, mostly for Christmas, and the other half were just, yeah, ones I've picked up secondhand at thrift stores, etc. And as usual, these are mostly horror or horror adjacent, but there are a few other things in here as well. So yeah, I'm excited to share them with you. I got some really awesome gifts from some really awesome people and I yeah found some really great things as well in the thrift stores. So here we go. First up is one that Regina from Regina's Haunted Library sent to me. I think she actually sent me this around Halloween time if I'm remembering correctly. So it has been a little while, but thank you so much Regina for sending this my way. This is a Sweet Valley High super thriller. It's called Deadly Summer. And yeah, I feel like I should really pick this up during the summertime and give it a try. It sounds like the twins are working as interns on the Sweet Valley News and there is, yeah, some kind of student out for revenge situation. So I am down for that. The next one was a Christmas gift from my husband. He got me the Christopher Pike Final Friends trilogy. Oh my God, I am so excited to have this. I had this edition back in the day and then stupidly got rid of it at some point, have regretted it ever since. Um, so these are the three books in the Final Friends trilogy, The Party, The Dance and The Graduation. They were released in the UK as individual titles as well, but you could also get it in this bind up with the red edges. And yeah, I have just really been wanting to have this edition again. And now that I do, I'm very much looking forward to rereading it. I didn't read much Christopher Pike back in the day. I was like, point horror ride or die but I did read a couple and I did read these and really enjoyed them and I definitely remember just feeling how more adult they felt than the point horror books like they definitely felt a bit more edgy and you know included things like sex and drugs and stuff which typically the point horror books didn't cover so yeah really looking forward to revisiting this hopefully sometime this year. Another book from my husband, which ended up being like an early birthday present, very early since my birthday isn't till the end of March, <laughs> but he got me the Videodrome novelization. Oh my God, I freaked out when I opened this because I was not expecting it. And yeah, I have been wanting this for ages because Videodrome is one of my favorite films ever. But I know this can go for crazy prices. So yeah, I believe he found a good deal and uh, jumped on it for me. So I'm very glad that he did. And yeah, this is um, a novel by Jack Martin based on a screenplay by David Cronenberg. I believe Jack Martin is a pseudonym and if I'm remembering correctly, it's uh, for Dennis Etchison. I know he is a very prolific writer. I haven't read any of his work yet, but I'm looking forward to doing so. And yeah, hopefully I'll get to this one before too long too. A Christmas gift from my mum was Ghostland. In Search of a Haunted Country by Edward Parnell. This is a non-fiction book and I have just recently read it. I talked about it in my January reading wrap up if you want to hear more of my thoughts. This is about the author's experiences growing up in the UK and he is kind of traveling around various parts of the country looking at like specific authors that wrote ghost stories and specific films and stuff you know of that ilk that were made in the country and the way that the country itself has inspired these writers and these stories and how that has you know also influenced him as a child and growing into an adult and yeah it also touches on a lot of personal things for him and like losing family members um, so yeah it is quite a poignant read as well as an interesting one I really enjoyed it overall so yeah this was a really good gift thanks mum and a Christmas gift from my sister is this very sparkly and jazzy Goosebumps book this is a give yourself Goosebumps reader beware you choose the scare the actual title being number 10 diary of a mad mummy 
So yeah, I'm sure this will be a lot of fun. It definitely has a great cover. <laughs> so thank you to my sister for sending me this one. I look forward to reading it sometime. Speaking of Goosebumps, I have some Goosebumps-esque books here that were very kindly sent to me by my friend Sandy. So these are five books in the Creepers series by Edgar J. Hyde. And yeah, I love the covers of these. They look super fun. So we've got this green one, The Piano. Dun, dun, dun. We have Ghost Writer and The Golden Goblets. Gotta love a skeleton on the cover. We've got Pen Pals. Gotta love a gravestone on the cover. And last up, Stage Fright with Witches and a Cauldron. So what is not to like? <laughs> These all look really cool. And yeah, I look forward to diving into them sometime. So thank you, Sandy. I received these two books as a Christmas gift from the wonderful Kelsey at Slime and Slashers. I was not expecting these, they just turned up one day and it was such a lovely surprise. Um, she got me this anthology called Found and it is made up to look like a VHS tape. I remember when this came out and thought it looked really really interesting but yeah hadn't gotten around to getting a copy yet so really stoked to have this. Uh, this is edited by Andrew Cole and Gabino Iglesias and there are 18 short stories in here. Very much looking forward to reading this one. And she also got me The Summer I Died by Ryan C. Thomas. This is another one I've been wanting to read. This one is an extreme horror novel which I've heard, yeah, is really disturbing and uh, again I'm very much looking forward to reading it. This one is about two friends spending the summer together, hanging out, hoping to have a great time and they cross paths with a sadistic killer. So super fun times I'm sure. But yes, I am stoked to have both of these and yeah, really looking forward to reading them both. And last up for the books I received, I got these two books which were sent to me by the publisher. I am honestly not sure why they sent these to me because I didn't request them or anything. <laughs> they just turned up one day, but I'm not gonna say no to free books, especially free books that sound interesting. So thank you for sending these my way. Again, I look forward to reading them. We have The Insatiable Vault Sisters by Rachel Eve Moulton. And looks like this is about two sisters and seems like they grew up on an island. Over the years, they have grown apart and one of them has stayed on the island and one has not. And the one that left the island has to return to deal with some family stuff. So yeah, I feel like that could be an interesting one. And then also The Hollow Kind by Andy Davidson. This is about a woman who inherits an estate from her grandfather. She and her young son pick up and move there for a fresh start. And I don't know too much about this one other than it says it's a jaw-dropping, terrifying novel about legacy and the nightmares hidden in family histories. So yeah, that sounds interesting too. And I do remember Crystal from Fiber Artsy talking really highly of this one. So that definitely has my interest peaked. Okay, and the rest of the books are ones that I picked up secondhand over the past few months. These are all vintage. Um, we've got a few adult horror novels, a couple of YA novels, and a handful of middle grade. So yeah, some exciting ones here. Uh, let's start off with See No Evil by Patricia Wallace. I mean, the cover speaks for itself. Obviously, <laughs> I needed this in my life. And this one is in really good shape, so I was very happy to find it. The tagline is, horror opened their eyes and claimed their souls. This is about two kids who received cornea transplants and afterwards they start seeing some shit. Um, yeah, don't really know too much else about it, but that sounds like it could be bonkers. Goblins by Vincent Courtney, another amazing cover. Um, sadly, this one has a rip in it, but I got it for cheap, so I'm not gonna complain. The tagline on the front says, there was something wrong with the Martins' baby. It lived. I mean, come on, count me in. This also has something about Scottish countryside and a filmmaker making a vampire horror movie. And yeah, they're trying to get pregnant. 
and yeah there just sounds like a lot going on and I'm 100% here for it. Nathaniel by John Saul. I told myself I wasn't going to pick up any more John Saul novels until I read some more of his work since I have several already and I've only read one but the one I did read, Suffer the Children, was really good so I really do need to pick up more of his books, like actually pick them up to read them. Um, but I couldn't resist this one. It's got a grave on the cover um, and the tagline is from the blood of the past, evil rises to seek undying vengeance. So yeah, I mean, I'm always here for a revenge story. Last up for the adult novels is Flicker by Theodore Rorschach. Apologies if I mispronounce that, but oh my god, this cover is gorgeous. I am obsessed with it. This one is a bit of a chunky one. I don't remember where or when I heard about this. Um, I think it was quite a while ago, but yeah, I was very happy to find a copy of my own. It is something to do with film, movies, um, and honestly, don't even know if I need to know any more about that. That and the cover are enough to entice me. I was very happy to find a Christopher Pike book. This one is Road to Nowhere and it's got a skeleton on the cover. Bonus! The tagline is death came along for the ride and uh, yeah we don't really need to know any more than that I don't think. I've got to the point of my Pike collection where I sometimes am not sure whether I own a book or not if I see one out in the wild. Um, so Part of me thought I already had this one, but luckily I did look it up and I found out that I did not already have it, so I was able to snap it up. So I'm glad I double checked. I also found a book from the Fear Street Sagas by R.L. Stein. This one unfortunately is book four, <laughs> The Sign of Fear, but A, we've got a skull on the cover, so obviously I wasn't gonna leave it behind, um, and B, I don't know, I don't think I had a B, it was all about the skull really. Um, but yeah, you've got to snap these up when you see them really, even though I do not have books one, two or three, <laughs> but hopefully I can track them down at some point. Okay, moving on to the vintage middle grade. I found another Girl Talk book. I only have one other of this series, but I was very pleased to find this one because it's book one. This one is Welcome to Junior High! Exclamation mark by L. E. Blair. And yeah, loving this cast of characters on the, on the front, especially this one, the kind of punky one, obviously, because she looks super cool. Um, so yeah, this might be a good contender for old school April or something. Yeah, that one and the next few are some like non-horror ones that I just thought looked really cute and I couldn't resist picking them up. So next up is one of the Galloping Detective series, which I was not familiar with. This is book five, False Lead by Claire Birch. And yeah, the concept of this series sounds like a kind of a horsey girl who is also like an amateur detective. I mean, why not have that combo, honestly? <laughs> Middle School Blues by Lou Cassim. Again, what a gorgeous cover and the colours and everything are just really wonderful. This one sounds fairly self-explanatory and is following a character who is yeah, feeling a bit out of place and out of sorts when they start middle school. Nothing's Fair in Fifth Grade by Barth de Clements. What a name and what a cute cover. The only thing is, I picked this up purely for the cover and it was only when I got home that I actually read the back and it sounds like really fat phobic. To even read the back synopsis I was cringing so I really don't know what this book is gonna be like but yeah I'll have to give it a try at some point. My Zombie Valentine, what a great name, uh, by Diane Curtis Regan and the back says roses are red, violets are wilted, why do you walk so stiff and stilted? Brilliant. I've got four more books to share with you and these are middle grade of the spooky kind. So we've got Stone Words, A Ghost Story by Pam Conrad and I remember hearing about this probably a good few years ago now from a fellow booktuber Laura. I don't think she is active on her channel anymore but if Laura happens to be watching this thank you for recommending this. I finally picked myself up a copy. I definitely remember her talking highly of it. And yeah, this just sounds like a great ghost story, so looking forward to reading it. Halloween by Todd Strasser. I mean, what a cover, what a title. I'm obviously eyeing this up for this year's October reading list. 
I, yeah, couldn't resist snapping that one up. And it sounds like something about a freaky jack-o'-lantern and some weird stuff going on. Yeah, I look forward to giving this a read during the official spooky season later this year. The next one is actually technically not vintage. It originally came out in 2009. Um, and this is Skeleton Creek um, by Patrick Carmen. This is book one of a series. It says, read the book, watch the videos. What, they've got videos? Uncover the mystery. And it's um, all written like this, as though it's, you know, notes and stuff. I don't know, I'd never heard of this. If anyone else has heard of it, let me know. I hope the relevant videos are still somewhere online to be able to watch since I guess 2009 was a while ago. Um, but yeah, I just thought this sounded like a really fun concept and could be really good and it sounded spooky as well. So I'm curious about it. And last up is a Dead Time Stories book. I don't have any of these, well, until now. I now have one. <laughs> this one is Grandpa's Monster Movies. It's by A.G. Cascone. And yeah, another great cover. I love these claws coming through the projector screen. And yeah, it sounds like um, a kid is staying at their grandpa's place and they are, you know, reminiscing and looking at some old home movies. And I guess, yeah, something is revealed. I'm not sure, but it looks super fun. So those are all the books that I have added to my library recently. I'm very excited to have all of these. Very grateful to those who have sent books my way, as usual. <laughs> now I just need to find the time to read them. But in the meantime, I will try to squeeze them onto my shelves. And yeah, looking forward to reading them at some point. If you've read any of these, I would love to hear your thoughts. If there are any here that you think I should read sooner rather than later, please do let me know. Thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And hopefully I will see you again in my next video. Bye.